So in this video, I'm going to describe something that happened to me that's going to show you that developers will not be replaced by AI anytime soon. Anybody who tells you that AI is the end of development, they're people who don't have any real world experience as developers. That is pretty clear to me. I'll give you a classic example of something that happened to me today. So one of the apps that I manage is a form, a simple PHP based, well, it's not so simple. It's a PHP based form. I didn't write it, I license it, and uh, I manage it on my server. So I have to make sure it's up, up to date and the patches are updated and so on. I wouldn't recommend it. If I had to do it over again, I would probably just use some third party or use Discord or something. But anyway, it's been up for many years, like 10 years or so. So I use it for my private mentoring community. We have a, a locked off section. It's got all kinds of capabilities. Cool. Anyway, whatever. So today at some point, it just stops working. I go to load it, boom, and I get this uh, error message, fatal error, exception, uh, returning no, blah, blah, blah. I, won't, I forget the details, but long string, deep in the app somewhere. So I'm like, well, that's weird. We didn't change anything. There was nothing had changed. So I, I contacted the, um, the VPS management. I have fully managed servers. And I said, did you update anything? And they said, we didn't do anything that would affect your application. I said, well, what did you do? And they couldn't give me a specific answer, but they insisted that nothing was changed that would uh, affect my application. And it was a fully managed server. So I said, okay. Um, so I went in and I started trying to figure out what the error was in terms of maybe uh, settings in the PHP. There's, you get the PHP config. You, you got all these little triggers you can set off, you know, all these config options that you have. I wonder if I changed, you know, if I did anything, but I didn't do anything. So this is very perplexing. A piece of software that has been working very, very well uh, for years and years, unless I did an update, but I hadn't done, done an update recently, and all of a sudden it just stops working. So what do I do? I figured it's not the file system. It can't be the file system. But I said, just in case it is the file system, because it's a, uh, a VPS, um, I asked the admins, I said, roll back uh, that install by 48 hours when it was working before. They rolled it back 48 hours so just in case something happened in the background. Maybe somebody hacked it or something. I don't know. Roll it back. So when you have uh, a virtual server, you can they have snapshots every uh, X amount of minutes depending on your host, depending on the, the business. So they, we just rolled it back 48 hours to see what happened. Still didn't work. So this is really perplexing because 48 hours ago it worked and now uh, nothing had changed and it still didn't work so something weird I don't know we call that gremlins the technical term in software development is alien gremlins have invaded your software anyway so since the rollbacks didn't work and I hope you understand when you roll back an image in a virtualized server, you're literally taking a clone, an unadulterated clone of that snapshot of your server at that time, and just saying, well, make that the current version. And what was perplexing, it wasn't working. So fortunately, as a commercial ser a commercial forum, I, uh, I pay for uh, support. So I go in there and I talk to the support forum, and they're pretty good. And they said, uh, okay, we're going to have to go into um, safety mode. It's kind of an emergency mode. So you have to go into the code. You got to find this file at this line here. So it tells it to go into safety mode. So I guess a total beginner could do this. Not that difficult. But being a developer, understanding code, understanding structures of application, it was very trivial for me. I go boom, boom. And I did it. And boom, I was able to bring it into um, safety mode. And then they told me for this particular software, I was able to just navigate to a certain view and it would it just uh, uninstalled all plugins and themes. This is not WordPress, it's another application, but anyway. So it did that and it worked. So one of the plugins, something in the theme, for some reason, at that point in time, broke the whole bloody thing. Now, I've truncated this and uh, edited this story down 
so you know for his video but this took like a better part of the morning to figure out you know at one point one of the things i had to do by the way one of the things i had to do like for some reason lost access to the database that was weird so i had to go in there reestablish access to the database i got that fixed which took me to the next level where i could bring into safety mode but anyway so there you go so this is actually par for the course for a lot of developers notice I spent the better part of the morning working on this to get the app going, and I'm not writing any code, well, hardly any. This is what I'm doing. This is the job of a coder. This is the job of a developer. Developer, especially as you get more advanced in the work that you do, a lot of times you're going to be working on configuration problems, chasing down issues. It could be uh, some third-party API or some third-party module that they've broken something on their end and trying to track down these things. ChatGPT is not going to help you there. So again, the reason I put out this video, I've been talking about AI recently, is because I think people need to hear from somebody who's been doing this since 94. Understand that uh, though AI is, um, they call it AI, but it's not really an intelligence. Uh, if you look at what they're doing, it's a probability uh, tool set, if you will. It's out there and it's able to uh, through some uh, advanced algorithms and lots of training, it's able to figure out what's the most next probable thing to say or to or to type out, you know? So it's not really thinking yet. Even if it got to the point where it could think, who knows when that will happen? Could it happen tomorrow? Could it happen in five years, in 10 years? Typically, I find that technology seems to, we see a big leap and everybody goes, Whoa! and then it's kind of a very slow arduous process to get to the next level. The example of this I like to cite is, of course, smartphones. When Apple came out with their iPhone, the first iPhone, you know, touchscreen, blah, blah, blah. If you think about the feature set of modern phones today, they're just an improved version of what essentially they came out with. I think it was 2007. So in like, whatever, 15 years, give or take it, you know, a year, they haven't really pushed the ball to much, you know, in my opinion, regards to smartphones. Yeah, they're faster, they're bigger, they're thinner, the screens are nicer, but it, it's nothing groundbreaking. So we may see that within the, uh, the AI space, in the machine learning space. Again, I'm not poo-pooing it. I tell people, embrace it. It's a great technology. It will save you a lot of time as a developer, but you got to know what you're doing and you can use it to save time but it's not going to replace you as a developer anytime soon. Will chat GPT and similar tools replace other jobs? Yes. Simpler jobs like copywriters, it will reduce the need of proofreaders, I think uh, paralegals, that kind of stuff. Even a lot of legal work, I think, could be done with uh, an AI. Well, I'm pretty sure it will be done with an AI. But in terms of development, we got all these disparate, disparate things to consider, configuration issues, troubleshooting issues, where you have to understand the code, but you have to be able to go deep into the system, understand how things work, so you can pinpoint where and a bug may be. That's why, for example, in my training, when I train people in the uh, the full stack, I get into I, I spend time discussing the request response cycle, the server and client model, how web browsers process code, where code is processed. This is very important to understand. Because when you're writing a code and then you run into the inevitable bugs, understanding the way these things all work together is going to make your life a lot easier as a developer. The final point I want to address is that some people have said, well, Steph, you know, you're just saying this about coding because you teach coding. So you depend on it. That's not true. Yes, in my programs, I have very comprehensive coding courses. I think the most comprehensive in the game hundreds of video lessons and quizzing and interactivity and instant help and all this stuff. Very important, fundamental to my mentoring. But it's only a part of what I do. I teach so many other things. I teach you teach you psychological skills, how to get a job, how to conduct yourself professionally, teach personal finance, it's a whole bunch, a whole bunch of different things. So if one day AI came out and made coding obsolete, which is not going to happen for a while, I would just pivot out of that. I would say, okay, you have to become an, an expert of using all the different AI tools. And everything else that I do would be still 100% applicable. So 
my motivation in saying this is not personal, it's not financial, it doesn't affect me. It's just reality. All right, I hope you found this video useful. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. Code Long and Profit, that is my Discord channel. Links below. And if you're interested in getting mentored by somebody who's been writing professional code since 1994, links below. UncleSteph.com. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.